the world is changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. Much that once was is lost, for none now live who remember it. It began with the great council in heaven. God decided to create a creature who would not only resemble him in physical appearance, but this creature would be able to create after his own kind and would be spiritually discerning. A unique creation as none before it. God also devised a plan to rescue his new creation should they be overcome by the powers of darkness. He would send his only begotten son to save them. For deep in the heart of hatred, the dark Lord Satan forged his master plan, which the Lord God could read. And into this plan he poured his cruelty, his malice, his will to dominate and destroy all life on earth, one plan to rue them all. Clearly, I have taken some serious liberty with Tolkien's opening lines in the book The Lord of the Rings, but how aptly it captures the beginning of the great controversy between Christ and Satan and our desperate need of a savior. I thought today I might share with you another excerpt from the book Desire of Ages, written in 1898 by Ellen G. White. The chapter is entitled, Behold, Thy King Cometh. Coming down from the Mount of Olives, Jesus gazes upon a scene, the scene of the temple in the city of Jerusalem. The vast multitude hush their shouts, spellbound by the sudden vision of beauty. All eyes turn upon the Savior. They behold a cloud of sorrow. His eyes fill with tears and his body rocks to and fro like a tree before the tempest, while a wail of anguish bursts from his quivering lips as it from the depths of a broken heart. What a sight this was for the angels to behold, their loved commander in agony of tears. What a sight this was for the glad throng that with shouts of triumph and waving of palm branches were escorting him to the glorious city where they fondly hoped he was about to reign as king on David's throne. This sudden sorrow was like a note of wailing and a grand triumphal chorus in the midst of a scene of rejoicing where all were paying him homage, Israel's king was in tears and groans of insuppressible agony. Jerusalem, that had rejected the Son of God and scorned his love, that refused to be convinced by his mighty miracles and was about to take his life, he saw what she in her guilt of rejecting her Redeemer and what she might have been had she accepted him alone who could heal her wound. He had come to save her. How could he give her up? He saw her destruction, bearing the frown of God and his retributive judgment for her failure to heed his loving entreaties and tender mercies. Yet again, the Spirit of God speaks to Jerusalem. Before the day is done, another testimony is born to Christ. The voice of witness is lifted up, responding to the call from a prophetic past. If Jerusalem will hear the call, if she will receive the Savior who is entering her gates, she may yet be saved. Reports have reached the rulers in Jerusalem that Jesus is approaching the city with a great concourse of people, but they have no welcome for the Son of God. In fear, they go out to meet him, hoping to disperse the throng. As the procession is about to descend the Mount of Olives, it is intercepted by the rulers. They inquire the cause of the tumultuous rejoicing as they question, who is this? The disciples, filled with the spirit of inspiration, answer this question. In eloquent strains, they repeat the prophecies concerning Christ. Adam will tell you, it is the seed of the woman that shall bruise the serpent's head. Genesis 3.15 Ask Abraham, he will tell you, it is Melchizedek, king of Salem, 
king of peace. Genesis 14, 18. Jacob will tell you. He is Shiloh of the tribe of Judah. Genesis 49, 10. Isaiah will tell you. Emmanuel, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Isaiah 7, 14 and 9, 6. Jeremiah will tell you, the branch of David, the Lord our righteousness, Jeremiah 23, 6. Daniel will tell you, he is the Messiah, Daniel 9, 26. Hosea will tell you, he is the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial, Hosea 12, 5. John the Baptist will tell you, He is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. John 1, 29. The great Jehovah has proclaimed from his throne, This is my beloved Son. Matthew 3, 17. We, his disciples, declare, This is Jesus the Messiah, the Prince of Life, the Redeemer of the world. And the Prince of the powers of darkness acknowledges him, saying, I know thee whom thou art, the Holy One of God. Mark 1, 24. Events on this earth are quickly culminating. Even news pundits like Glenn Beck have begun to warn that something terrible is approaching and it will be a spiritual battle. And he is right. Soon, we will see Jesus again. Jesus will not come meekly or humbly as he did as a baby. In his next appearance, he will come in all of his godly majesty and with all the majesty of God the Father, and he will be accompanied by the entirety of the angelic hosts. Twice in history, it will be proclaimed, Behold, thy king cometh, And the righteous will declare, This is our God, whom we have waited for. He has come to save us. I believe. Do you believe?